when you guys look at 1 over x, it's a basically this little hyperbola here. But any point on here, let's call this just x, you can create a tangent line, right? There can be a tangent line drawn right there. Yes? And really, no other point on the graph there's really going to be an issue with identifying our tangent line. So again, what we practiced was, however, the definition of that tangent line, or what the slope is of that tangent line, does change based on where you're at, right? So we want to be able to find that equation that provides us what the equation of the line should be at any given point. Because here it's really negative, here it's not so negative, correct? So we want to be able to write, we want to be able to find what is that equation for that local linearity. Now, again, what we talked about last class period was we said, well, what if we chose another point and we added some number to it? And again, for instructional purposes, let's say h is 5, just to have fun. h is equal to 5. Well, if we were to find the slope of there, hello, new? Okay, cool. Um, oh, okay, you can go through. Here, walk around that way. Okay. Um, so if we were going to find the slope of this equation, right? Now, actually, I'm sorry, hold on. So if you guys look at this, what happens is, if I wanted to find, here is the slope, here's the slope of x plus h and x, right? And what happens is, as h, so h is at 5. What happens when h is like 2? Do you guys see how that line gets closer and closer to what that blue slope is? Right? So we want h to approach 0. Because once h is 0, that gives us that perfect tangent line. So it doesn't matter what the function is. In this case, we have the function f of x plus, you know, f of x equals 1 over x. So all we're going to do when applying this difference quotient and say, all right, what is x plus h? So what happens when I plug x plus h in for x? Well, I'm just going to have limit as h is approaching 0 of um, x plus, I'm sorry, 1 over x plus h minus f of x, which is just my function, 1 over x, all over h. Um, and again, remember guys, this is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's subtraction. I wrote that wrong. Remember, it's the slope formula, basically. If you guys remember, you're subtracting x plus h minus, or, and you're subtracting these, and then x plus h minus uh, x, and the x is subtract out. That's why we're just left with h. Now, we have this. And everybody should be able to get to this point. Everybody should be able to get to this point. All you're doing is plugging in x plus h in for x subtracting f of x, and then dividing by h, which is part of the difference quotient. Now, where people will make mistakes is the algebra, which is OK. But understanding the difference quotient, everybody should at least get to this point. Now, to simplify this, we have to combine our rational expressions. So I need to subtract x plus h and h. That means I need to get common denominators, which would be x times x plus h. So I multiply on both sides, and now I obtain limit as x approaches 0 of x over x plus h minus x plus h over x. OK, so now what happens when I combine these? I get x minus x, which is 0. So, and then I have. Remember, you're subtracting both the x and the h. So that's minus x, and that's minus h. So therefore, I'm left with limit as x appro oh, I'm sorry, as h approaches 0. As h approaches 0 of negative h over x times x plus h all over h. So basically, we have a fraction divided by h. So the easy way to simplify this is to make the h a fraction, then we could say we have a fraction in the numerator, fraction in the denominator. To get rid of the fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal 1 over h, 1 over h, and 
we obtain. Now, that multiplies to 1. The h's divide to 1. And we're left with, and then we can plug in 0 in for h. Sorry, that wasn't supposed to divide out. It was that h and that h. Plug that in for 0. You guys can see we have a negative 1 over x squared. And there you go. That's the equation of the line at any point. Did anybody see my points right? Yes. Here? Here? No. Here? Yeah. Well, h, h divided by h, which is just 1. So it doesn't really cancel out, but it goes to 1. Well, this one's inside the parentheses. So I, I said h approaches 0, so I plug 0 in for h. Yep. Where are you over here? You want to divide those out? Well, if they would, yeah, of course they do. Because that's how we, we got those to combine them. Because the only reason why I got these, it, I did that on purpose. Of course it divides out. You can divide it out right there. I did that on purpose so they had common denominators. The other way to write this out would be x minus x plus h, I'm sorry, minus h, all over x times x plus h. I did that so they had common denominators so I could combine them. So I did that on purpose. Now you can see that those subtract out and you get negative h. OK? Anybody else have any other questions? No? Where are you coming to join us from? Rebuilt. Rebuilt. Okay. What's your name?